Hey little buddy, wanna go for a ride? This is something I've been putting off for a while, but the shocks and struts on the Jetta are completely worn out. The car floats like an old Cadillac, and the suspension bottoms out every time I hit a speed bump. I was originally going to do the front strut and rear shock replacement all in one video, but I forgot to buy bump stops for the rear shocks. Oops. So the rear shocks will be covered in a separate video. I'm replacing the struts with quick strut assemblies, which includes the suspension springs, bump stops, strut bearings, upper mounts, and so on. Anyway, let's get to work. First I'm going to put wheel chocks under the back wheels. Then I'll jack up the front end and put it on jack stands. After removing the wheels we have a better view of the old struts. The dust boots are falling apart and the bump stops are pretty beat up. This is why I decided to get quick strut assemblies. All these old parts will be replaced in one shot. Plus I won't have to mess around with spring compressors. The struts have plastic beauty covers on top. I need to remove them to gain access to the nut on top of the strut. But before removing that nut I'm going to detach the bottom of the strut first. I'll start by detaching any wires and hoses that are attached to the strut. The wiring for the wheel speed sensors just pops loose. On the left side wheel there's also the wiring for the brake wire sensor. Somebody zip tied it to the strut so I'll cut the zip tie. Now I'm going to disconnect the sway bar from the control arms. I need to be able to move each control arm separately so I can remove the old struts and install the new ones. Disconnecting the sway bar will make that easier. The service manual says to disconnect the brake calipers and hang them out of the way. It also says to disconnect the ball joints from the control arms. But I'm going to try to avoid that to make the job easier. The bottom of the strut fits into the hub carrier. The hub has a pinch bolt that clamps the strut in place. So that pinch bolt needs to come out. The bolt also has a nut on the end. So I removed the nut and pulled the bolt out. The next step is to use a special tool to spread open the hub carrier so the strut can come out. Unfortunately, I forgot to buy that tool. I checked with several local auto parts stores and nobody had that tool. They didn't even know what I was talking about. I had to show them pictures of it. After wasting a bunch of time on that, I decided to try a 3 8 to a quarter inch adapter for a socket wrench. Luckily it fit. I turned it 45 degrees to spread open the hub carrier and it worked. Just barely. I still had to tap on the hub carrier with a mallet to get the strut out, but at least I didn't have to order a special tool and wait for shipping. Okay, now it's time to remove that nut on top of the strut. With the bottom of the strut disconnected, it's going to spin around when I try to use a wrench. But I have an idea. This is something I've used before and it works pretty well. I'm going to grab the strut shaft with vice grips and buzz off the nut with an impact gun. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? Also that top plate seems to be threaded onto the strut, but I was able to unscrew it by hand. With everything disconnected I should be able to remove the strut assembly. 
Wait, did you see that? The upper strut mount just fell off the end of the strut. I don't think it's supposed to do that. So apparently these struts were assembled incorrectly. The previous owner of the car had the shocks and struts replaced before he sold the car to me. So it looks like the shop didn't assemble them correctly. This might explain a random clunking noise in the front suspension. It's been doing that basically since I bought the car. Even after replacing a bunch of worn parts in the front suspension, it still had that clunk. It would be nice if this gets rid of it. Anyway, let's move on to the right side of the car. This side will be more of a challenge. The CV axle is longer on this side and it interferes with the subframe if I try to push the control arm down. The service manual says to disconnect the axle from the transmission and move it out of the way. I don't want to mess with that, so I'm going to try something else. Instead, I'm going to disconnect the ball joint and tie rod and move the hub carrier toward the front of the car. That should move the CV axle forward enough so it doesn't interfere with the subframe anymore. Then I can get the strut out of the hub carrier. The ball joint has three bolts on the bottom. The tie rod has a cotter pin and a castle nut. After removing the cotter pin, I loosened the castle nut but didn't completely remove it. I gave the hub carrier a good hard whack with the mallet to help loosen up the tie rod. Then I gave the tie rod a tap on the end. The castle nut helps to protect the end of the tie rod so it doesn't get mushroomed out. Then I finagled the hub carrier forward toward the front of the car and removed the strut. I used the socket adapter to spread the hub carrier and tapped on it with the mallet just like I did on the other side. Okay, it's almost time to install the new struts. But first I'm going to clean out the hub carriers with a wire brush just to make sure there isn't any junk in there. And I'm going to use some petroleum jelly to help the new struts go in easier. You may have noticed the hub carriers have a slot in the one side, and the struts have a flange on the side. The flange on the strut goes into the slot in the hub carrier. Keep that in mind when installing the strut. I decided to install the top of the struts first. I loaded them into the strut towers, then I threaded the top plate and the top nut by hand to hold them in place. Then I finagled the bottom of the strut into the hub carrier. The spreader tool needs to be installed in the hub carrier so the strut can fit in. I also used a floor jack to push the hub carrier onto the strut. First I put the jack under the brake rotor, but that didn't work so well. The entire hub assembly was trying to tilt to one side, so I tried putting the jack under the control arm instead. That worked a lot better. It's important to fully seat the strut in the hub carrier. If you look inside the hub carrier, there's a lip on the bottom. The bottom of the strut needs to be resting on that lip. If the strut isn't fully seated in the hub carrier, it will change the suspension geometry, and that might cause handling problems. Once the strut was in place, I removed the spreader tool and started reassembly. I also reattached the sway bar and the wiring. Here are the torque specs for the fasteners. One final note, I decided to install the wheels and take the car off the jack stands before tightening the nuts on top of the struts. I didn't want to be fighting against the weight of the suspension while I was tightening them. I also noticed the plastic beauty caps didn't fit on the new struts, but whatever. Then I took it for a test drive. What a difference. Oh, and that mystery clunk is gone. Yes. Anyway, that's it for this video. The rear shock absorber video is coming up soon.
So stay tuned.